In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, there is mentioned the man of sin. We read in verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Paul was telling the Thessalonians that Jesus' coming was not to happen until the man of sin is revealed. But Paul continued by explaining who he was referring to in the next verse. Paul said that the man of sin will oppose himself and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4. Who was Paul referring to? Paul was referring to a prophecy in Daniel chapter 11 about a king. Notice the wording in the book of Daniel chapter 11. Verse 36 to 39 reads, And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself, and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. For in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver, and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for gain. So what do we know of this man of sin? We know that he would speak marvelous things against the God of gods. Verse 36. We read almost the same words of the little horn power in Daniel chapter 7. We are told in verse 8 of Daniel 7, In this horn were the eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things, a man of sin. This is the man of sin. Further, we are told in Daniel 7.25 about this power, that he shall speak great words against the Most High. Isn't that the same as speaking marvelous things against the God of God, as we read in Daniel 11.36? But the verse in Daniel 7.25 says more. It says, He shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. How does it speak great words against the Most High? Well, Pope Pius V blasphemed God by saying the Pope and God are the same. So he has all power in heaven and earth, Pope Pius V. Now, Pope Innocent III said, We may, according to the fullness of our power, dispose of the law and dispense above the law. They can change the law, they say. Those whom the Pope of Rome does separate, it is not a man that separates them, but God. For the Pope holdeth place on earth, not simply of a man, but of the true God. Pope Leo XIII also declared, We hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. Pope Pius IX said, I alone am the successor of the apostles, the vicar of Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Pope Pius X declared that the Pope is not simply the representative of Jesus Christ. On the contrary, he is Jesus Christ himself under the veil of the flesh. Does the Pope speak? It is Jesus Christ who is speaking hence. When anyone speaks of the Pope, it is not necessary to examine, but to obey. Pope Boniface VIII said, We declare, assert, define, and pronounce to be subject to the Roman Pontiff is to every creature altogether necessary for salvation. I have the authority of King of Kings. I am all in all and above all, so that God himself and I, the Vicar of Christ, have but one consistory, and I am able to do almost all that God can do. What therefore can you make of me but God? Pope Pius XII also said that we are to recognize the Holy Catholic Roman Church to be the only true Church of Jesus Christ, outside of which neither sanctity nor salvation can be found. Call them to the unity of the one fold, granting them the grace to believe every truth of our holy faith and to submit themselves to the supreme Roman Pontiff, the Vicar of Jesus Christ on earth. And if at times our efforts and works seem to fail and not produce fruit, we need to remember that we are followers of Jesus Christ and his life, humanly speaking, ended in failure, the failure of the cross.
How does this man of sin change times and laws? We read in Daniel 7, 25. What laws in the Bible have to do with the appointed times? When we look at the Ten Commandments of the Catholic Church, we'll notice that the Church has removed the Second Commandment, which has to do with the adoration of images. And then he's divided the Tenth Commandment to complete the Ten. And finally, changing the days of worship which God commanded, especially the Fourth Commandment of the Sabbath. They wrote, question, have you any other way of proving that the Church has power to institute festivals of precept? Answer, had she not such power, she could not have done that in which all modern religionists agree with her. She could not have substituted the observance of Sunday, the first day of the week, for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority. Question, how prove you that the Church has power to command feast and holy days? Answer, by the very act of changing the Sabbath into Sunday, which Protestants allow of, and therefore they fondly contradict themselves by keeping Sunday strictly and breaking most other feasts commanded by the same church. Question, how prove you that? Because by keeping Sunday, they acknowledge the church's power to ordain feasts and to command them under sin. And by not keeping the rest by her commanded, they deny again, in fact, the same power. Quote, is not every Christian obliged to sanctify Sunday, to abstain on that day from unnecessary servile work? Is not the observance of this law among the most prominent of our sacred duties? But you may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and you will find not a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday, a day which we never sanctify. And so these are all quotes from the Catholic Church themselves, saying that they've changed God's appointed time of the Sabbath. Now how about the saints being given into His hand for time, times, and dividing of time? This period is referred to several times in Scripture. A time is a year, times is two years, and a half a time is six months. In total, we have one plus two plus a half a year. That equals 3.5 years, 42 months. And the biblical months were 30-day months at creation. So therefore, 42 months times 30 days is 1260 days, which we read about in Revelation. We see this time period mentioned in Revelation 12, verse 6, and also verse 14, and it's also written in Revelation 13, 5, when referring to the first beast that comes up out of the sea. When referring to the prophecies in Ezekiel 4, 3, this is what we read. It says, This shall be a sign to the house of Israel. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Regarding the prophecies in Daniel, it is almost universally accepted that the 70 weeks or 490 days in Daniel 9 are 490 prophetic years. Now, we should follow the same rule for all the prophecies of Daniel. We should not change rules from prophecy to prophecy. So therefore, in Daniel chapter 7, which refers to the 1260 days or the time times and half a time, we should therefore treat these as 1260 years of prophetic history. In Revelation 13, 5, it is called 42 months. And then at the end, we see the wound of the papacy fulfilled. We read this in verse 10 of Revelation 13. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. For 1260 years, the papacy reigned over kings and civil authorities, and during this time, it is estimated more than 50 million people were slaughtered by the church. Entire villages were obliterated, and whoever had stood against the church. In Daniel 7, we are told that the beast that the little horn power came out of had 10 other horns. These horns were symbolic of the divided Roman Empire. In verse 24, just before the papal rule began, we are told that three of these horns had to be uprooted, or three kingdoms. Verse 24 of Daniel 7 reads, The ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. The tribes that were exterminated were called the Vandals, Visigoths, and Ostrogoths. The third, the Ostrogoths, were conquered in 538 AD. The reason for completely destroying these tribes, it was because of their Aryan beliefs. The tribes did not accept the Trinitarian belief of the Catholic Church. The Justinian Code, which was a civil law enforced against them, read thus, The Code of our Lord, the most sacred Emperor Justinian, concerning the most exalted Trinity and the Catholic faith and providing that no one shall dare to publicly oppose them. 
We desire that all people subject to our benign empire shall live under the same religion that the divine Peter the Apostle gave to the Romans. That is to say, we should believe that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit constitute a single deity endowed with equal majesty and united in the Trinity. We order all those who follow this law to assume the name of Catholic Christians and considering others as demented and insane. We order that they shall bear the infamy of heresy and when the divine vengeance which they shall merit has been appeased, they shall afterwards be punished in accordance with our resentment which we have acquired from the judgment of heaven. Let no place be afforded to heretics for the conduct of their ceremonies, and let no occasion be offered for them to display the insanity of their obstinate minds. Let all bodies of heretics be prevented from holding unlawful assemblies, and let the name of the only and the greatest God be celebrated everywhere. Moreover, he who is an adherent of the Nicene faith and a true believer in the Catholic religion should be understood to be one who believes that the Almighty God and Christ, the Son of God, are one person, God of God, light of lights, and let no one by rejection dishonor the Holy Spirit, whom we expect and have received from the supreme parent of all things, in whom the sentiment of a pure and undefiled faith flourishes, as well as the belief in the undivided substance of a holy trinity. Let those who do not accept those doctrines cease to apply the name of true religion to their fraudulent belief and let them be branded with their open crimes and having been removed from the threshold of all the churches, be utterly excluded from them. As we forbid all heretics to hold unlawful assemblies within cities, if however any seditious outbreak should be attempted, we order them to be driven outside the walls of the city with relentless violence. What was the result of this? Well, Arianism was crushed through a series of military and political conquests, culminating in religious and political domination of Europe over the next thousand years by Trinitarian forces in the Catholic Church. Trinitarian has remained the dominant doctrine in all major branches of the Eastern and Western Church and later within Protestantism. This law of the Justinian Code was enforced fully after 538, when the final horn was uprooted. Then the power ruled until 1798, when the papacy's power was removed on part of the French King Napoleon, through his general Berthier, who captured the Pope, ending the papal reign of the Church over the state. We read of this capture in Revelation 13, where it says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword shall die by the sword. In Daniel 11, speaking again of the man of sin which Paul referred to, who would exalt himself above God, speaking marvelous things against the God of gods, we read about who he was leading into captivity during the Dark Ages. In Daniel 11:33, we read, They that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword, and by flame, and by captivity, and by spoil many days. This is the fulfillment of the 1260 days. In verse 36 to 38, we read further again, And the king shall do according to his will. He shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the god of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any god, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the god of forces, a god whom his fathers knew not, shall he honor with gold and silver, with precious things and pleasant things. The Bible does mention the Trinity, and this is the exact place where this God, whom his fathers knew not, was exalted. Who is the God being honored, exalted, and given glory during these dark ages? The God that was mentioned in the Justinian Code, that was enforced at the time of the uprooting of the third tribe of Daniel 7. It is the Trinity. None of the fathers, such as Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, nor Moses, ever mention the Trinity. The Bible is clear that there is but one God the Father, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. Before we close, I want to mention something about this man of sin. In Revelation 13, we are told that the beast would be wounded, and that the wound would be healed. The wound has to do with the power that was taken from him. We will continue to study these things in further studies. But on September 24, 2015, the papacy was invited to speak on behalf of the Congress of the United States. And on September 25th of 2015, the Vatican flag was once again lifted up at the United Nations. This is an indication that the papacy is again recognized as a secular power, a diverse horn coming up in the midst of the ten horns. We have many things to learn from our history and the way the Lord has led us in the past. 
whether it be how he led through the wilderness or how he has led the early Christians or even Christianity today. Be sure to subscribe and join us next time for more.